so at this point, we have learned the derivative of e to the x. So let's move on to another rule. And this one is going to be the derivative of natural log of x. So if we have the natural log of x, then the derivative of it is 1 over x. And so the proof of that is if we utilize that x equals e to the natural log of x, which we know is true because the e and the natural log cancel itself out. So I'm using this. I'm taking the derivative of both sides. We know on the left-hand side, the derivative of x is equal to 1. On the right-hand side, what we do is a chain rule. We have e to the natural log of x, okay? So the derivative of the outside is e to the natural log of x times the derivative of the inside. And so the derivative of my inside function here is just this. I don't know what it is, so that's what we're trying to solve for. All right, well, if I'm trying to solve for this, then that means I must move this portion over to the other side. And so that means I can divide by it. Well, e to the natural log, I cancel out, and so really this is just x. So I divide by x on both sides, and that solves for what I am looking for. The derivative of natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. And so again, all we're going to do is combine this with all of the other derivative rules that we know so far. So, I have two examples here. Um, I'll work through these and then hopefully you can work through the rest of them on your own. My first one, f of x is equal to x times natural log of x. Well, this is x times natural log of x. Well, that means I have a product rule. Product rule says the original of the second, so natural log of x, times the derivative of the first, where the derivative of x is just 1, plus the original of the first times the derivative of the second. Well, we just learned that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And so I've utilized my product rule and I utilize my natural log rule. Okay, just simplifying this here. 1 times natural log of x is just natural log of x. And then over here, x divided by itself cancels out. And so that leaves me with a plus 1. So my derivative is natural log of x plus 1. All right, moving over to example two. Hopefully you realize right away that this is a chain rule because I have an inside and an outside function. So I'm going to utilize that chain rule first. And then when I need to take the derivative of the inside, that's when I'm going to take the derivative of my natural log of x. Okay, so my power rule chain rule here tells me that g prime of x, or t in this case, tells me that g prime of t is equal to 3 half times t plus natural log of t to the 1 half. So that was the derivative of the outside. I brought my power down, I kept my inside the same, and I subtract a power from the exponent. Now I need to multiply that times the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of this guy here. The derivative of t is just 1 plus the derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t. And so I have taken the derivative of this one here. All we need to do now is work on simplifying it, if we choose to do so. So I cannot simplify anything with this here other than maybe rewriting it as a square root because it is all to that power. So the only thing that I can really combine are those two. And whether it is or isn't going to help me out much, I don't know. Maybe not here, but maybe if we had to do something else with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and distribute this as 3 halves plus 3 over 2t. And then that is times t plus natural log of t to the 1 half power. If you did not choose to distribute that 3 halves through there, that would also be a, an acceptable answer. Okay, 
I have two more examples here. The first one might look quite intense, but you've actually utilized all those rules, so it shouldn't be any big deal. And then the second one, we definitely see that we have a chain rule involved, but you know how to handle it. So go ahead and pause the video and see what you get on these answers. Okay. On the first one, the first thing that I'm going to do is rewrite this as x to the 2 thirds power. That might make it a little easier to see. Now, you might be inclined to reduce these, but just note that that is not possible because in the top, this is natural log of x to the 2 thirds. So it's a part inside the function of natural log. All right, first thing that we have to do is the quotient rule here. So I have g prime of x is equal to the original of the bottom times the derivative of the top. Well, the derivative of the top is a outside inside chain rule. The outside is what's the derivative of natural log? Well, that is 1 over x to the 2 thirds with the same function times the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of x to the 2 thirds? Which is 2 thirds x subtract a power, which is negative 1 third. So okay. this is the derivative of the outside, which is the derivative of natural log. And this is the derivative of the inside, which is the inside of my natural log. And then this all is my first half of my quotient rule. So now I need to finish the second half. So I had a original of the denominator times derivative of the top minus the original of the top times the derivative of the denominator, which is 4x to the third. And then that is all over the denominator squared. Okay, to simplify this, which is definitely expected, we have all of this here. It's all multiplication. So I'm just going to combine it all at once. So if I review my power rules, I have x to the fourth in the numerator. I have x to the negative one third in the numerator. And I have x to the 2 thirds in the denominator. And so this is x to the 4 minus 1 third minus 2 thirds. And so that gives me 4 minus 3 thirds or x to the third power. So this gives me 2 thirds times x to the third power because I have this 2 thirds from here. And then I just showed you how to simplify all of the other x's. That is minus 4x to the third times natural log of x to the 2 thirds all over x to the 8th power. Again, if you're not going to do anything extra with this, this might be an acceptable answer. If you were to expect to simplify this, then you have x to the third in both of these. So I can cancel that out. So that's x to the third times 2 thirds minus 4 natural log of x to the 2 thirds all over x to the 8th. And so some mistakes that I would expect to see here is maybe some people think that I can factor this out. I cannot because that is inside the natural log. Natural log has to be a function of something. Something else I might see students do is try to subtract these. You cannot subtract them because we have four times natural log, and multiplication comes before subtraction. So the only extra thing that we can actually do to simplify here is notice I have x to the third over x to the eighth. And so I can reduce those. And so my numerator is going to stay the same. But if I subtract those powers, that gives me x to the fifth in the denominator. And so here is my derivative of this example. 
All right, the derivatives of example four. I already said there's a chain rule, so the derivative of natural log is one over. So I see one over two x to the third plus one. One over the inside function stays the same times the derivative of the inside function. Well, the derivative of my inside is a simple 6x squared. So to simplify this, I can just rewrite it as 6x squared over 2x to the third plus 1. So that chain rule was not so bad. All right, when we come back to the next video, I'm going to be showing you an example of how to use the derivatives of natural logs to find the equation of tangent lines. And we're going to be learning the derivatives of a couple more exponential and logarithmic functions.